It's game time. Game time, bro. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Black Codes. My name is Trevor Gwynn. I am one piece of the Black Codes puzzle. And today we have an exciting interview with none other than Warren Sadler. Um, Warren is a, in my eyes, a tech wizard. Um, and in the short span of time that I've gotten to know Warren, um, really understanding his mindset um, and what he's looking to achieve. Um, one of the biggest qualities um, that made me kind of want to interview Warren was his helpfulness, like essentially like the, the, the willingness to be helpful, the willingness to be helpful. But um, I will let him go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Warren, if you wouldn't mind telling the people a little bit about yourself, what man. you do and who you are. Yeah, and, uh, no, we'll I appreciate that. It. Very kind words, man. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that blows my mind. But uh, yeah, uh, it's Warren Sadler. I'm a cloud engineer. Um, and so what that means is like I really enjoy writing like performant, like durable, battle-tested code and everything. And so, you know, my background is a little unique. Yeah. Uh, I've actually been doing software for about 10 plus years now. Yeah. But a lot of that time was actually done uh, at a healthcare company writing like massive like data pipelines and things like that. And so yeah. if you or anyone you've ever known been to like one of the H day hospitals, like mm -hmm. over 200 of them across the United States, yeah. probably been some of my code out yeah. there doing that. <laughs> uh, but from like a, you know, Community perspective, I also run NASH.js, well, I help co-run yeah. NASH.js. Yeah. I'm a part of the Black Codes in yeah, a, absolutely. In a capacity. But also, man, uh, I think if you were to ask even my coworkers about me, it's about my love of technology, it's about my love of teaching, my practical jokes, and yeah. then uh, <laughs> just a, a willingness to help out, man. So yeah. that's, that's about me, man. I'm happy to be here, man. Happy talking with you. Appreciate it, and the, it's one, the beauty and balance in all three of those. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about, like, really the time that we like when i first met you or, okay. or we got introduced to each other and that was the uh, back. the pivot tech event yo yeah um, man. yeah 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 so that was really nice because your story i believe resonates with a lot of people and it's something that i want to mm. talk about like as far as like the untraditional route um getting into tech okay. and what that means because i know for myself like i came from a non-traditional background i was in the military first right. um yeah. and then to learn a lot of the you know the secrets to well learned a lot of the inroads and routes of what tech could offer and then from there it was like oh i get to pick you know pick my own adventure um but you having i believe a graphic design background yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then like getting switched over into that like kind of tell me what um how did that start? Or where was that spark for you? Yeah, no, honestly, like, uh, the full story is I actually was a, a musician. And so I, I have a okay. degree from TSU in commercial music, Ooh, focusing on guitar, okay. yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so uh, a lot of my design skills came from, like, doing art for bands and things mm -hmm. like that. My own band, my own, like, metal band. <laughs> so uh, when I found out that that's a really easy way to be unemployed, I was like, well, let me learn how to do something else. <laughs> and so graphic design was, like, a logical and, like, next step for me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's also pretty competitive in Nashville. It's like this is like a town for music, art, and design. Yeah. And so to stand out, I was like, you know what? If I'm a designer and I can code, that's what I'm gonna do. And so I was fortunate enough to be sponsored to go to the Nashville Software School. Yeah. Um, and that's really all started for me, man. I've been uh, coding ever since. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope, man. I know, like, for me, the route of working in corporate America, mm. like, and actually getting exposed to different areas of tech, like, right. I started off as a network technician. Oh, okay. And then from there, like, getting into, like, uh, Cisco and Juniper routers and, wow. you know what I'm saying, kind of understanding how, uh, like, I'm just uh, picking networks, making sure, okay, this is up, this is function. Right. But, like, you go a department over, and these guys are, you know, in Linux scripting, um, you know, scripting full programs for us, trying to make sure, like, hey, like, when you guys are off work, like, some of these, <laughs> some of these things will still, still work. Like, yeah, yeah, we got plenty of automation in here. And so I was like, wait, are you telling me I'm not going to be here after, like, <laughs> like, for a certain period of time? But, like, that also opened my eyes to, like, oh, so this is the next step, or I guess the evolution of that. Right. Um, and that genuinely interested me as far as, like, all right, like, what are these guys doing to make these, um, make these devices, all this hardware function like that. And right. that was one of the, 
I guess from there it's like kind of picking it up on my own as yeah, far yeah. as like our resources and going to different spots. Like, I want to say Free Code Camp might have been the first one, but yeah, like there's it's like an, at this point an infinite amount of tools and resources yeah, and I, I really like how it, this industry has changed every industry in yeah. the sense of the way we think about things like whether it be like you know graphic design like yeah. doing it online or like education was i guess my main point as far as like right. what education looks like for us in the future no um, that's interesting you know I, I think you you mentioned something like you know finding out about networking and then a little bit about systems and then mm -hmm. going even deeper there like it's it's same for me man i was a graphic designer and then mm -hmm. probably the most time i spent was being a data science engineer yeah but i think that's like the trajectory of software because yeah. there's really so many places you can go with it so yeah. it's not really about one thing and so like I guess to that question of like are there typical routes in software is there like a way to do it or a way to start I don't think that's the case anymore I think there's yeah. so many ways I think yeah. most people you used to find had a computer science background they went to like Berkeley or MIT or Stanford it's not the case so I mean it can yeah. really come from anywhere and that's kind of my story and it sounds like it's yeah. similar to yours yeah. but yeah that's a like as you were saying as far as like the non-traditional route has definitely led to non finding developers software engineers all these guys in non-traditional locations right and that for corporate America, that can be an issue because if they're not, if they are accustomed to looking in these traditional spots, right. you don't know where the rocks are to kind of look under. And I think that's like in black holes, like really what we're trying to identify, but also like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, uh, cure, what was that? Cure? Is cure the right word? Like, yeah. or, or just, yeah, help, help provide or help like put up a sign. Like here we are, like, mm. you know, we, uh, have quality developers like half the people most of the people like yourself have more experience than me or like wealth of knowledge from there but they're you know ready to jump on these opportunities or you know to create their own and right. so we hope to cater to a little bit of everybody um, in our community but also provide um, again like culture is one of the big things that you know as a black coast could you know since we don't necessarily see ourselves in the in the industry it's nice to have a space where um, that we can, that we can kind of feel comfortable, you know what yeah, I'm saying, kind yeah. of feel comfortable uh, without the expectations on us, but um, I guess like as far as finding talent in the industry when it comes to diversity, like what do you see? Yeah, no, um, a previous employer of mine, Asurion, like it's a massive corporation, if you have any electronic device you can think of or anyone probably purchased from Amazon, you've probably mm -hmm. been insured by Asurion. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember my first day there, I open up an email and it's from their CEO and he's saying, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And this is a white guy, man. This is yeah. a, a guy with Fortune 500 company saying that. And so I feel like, you know, maybe now it's 2020, people are starting to wake up to this idea that, you know, you can't just have lip service towards like inclusivity and diversity. It's like an actual thing you do and you Absolutely. talk about every single day. Yeah. And I think you need groups like the Black Codes who are out here, like you said, holding that sign saying, hey, hire us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the talent is here. So, yeah, you know, I, I think some of those ways you do that is community outreach. It's actually finding groups like the Black Codes. It's sponsoring events, you know, sort of like, for, I think for most people, you and I probably have a different background where maybe someone around us, someone we knew said software is a path for you, yeah. but not everyone has that. And so if companies were more intentional about saying, come to software, I think people would. And so yeah. I think that's kind of what we're trying to do with Pivot, yeah. you guys are trying to do with the Black Codes, and yeah. so I think it kind of comes together that way. Yeah, and if you guys haven't had a chance, check out Pivot Tech School for those of you who might be interested in um, getting into software, um, web development, data analytics. I'm sure they got like more um, programs coming on the way, but Warren is one of the architects in the curriculum there. So <laughs> like, like if you, you know, all that learning you're doing, that's because he, you know what I'm saying? Like he cold with them videos. So. <laughs> Appreciate um, that, man. But yeah, no, absolutely. And so you also talked about um, you co-running Nash.js as well. Yeah. Like, how did you get into that and what started that? You know, for me, I know a few of the guys who run it and I, and I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to speak for them. Mm -hmm. I also know some of the people who read them the space because I, you know, worked at the Entrepreneur Center for a period of time. And so okay, Nash.js used to be run primarily out of Emma, which was like right next door to uh, 
Entrepreneur Center. Man, this and space so, is like a nucleus for like yo, talent just bubbling over and like man. in any and all industries. Like every time I talk about somebody in networking, like the Entrepreneurship Center always is always, like the first man. thing. So. Yo, man, and so for me getting a chance to give a talk there, I think was like a, a lightning rod to just sort of say, hey, you know what? you. I think you know what you're talking about, <laughs> Yeah. but we want more people like that. And so Natch Dance is actually trying to do a lot more to improve sort of like the appearance of their like leadership board. So mm -hmm. it doesn't look all like one thing yeah. and they want people to kind of come and be a part of it. Cause you know, Nashville really is trying to tell that story of inclusivity and yeah. Nash.js is no different. So. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Man, I think, I don't know. So I guess some of the other thing, well, when I think of the black codes, it's almost like a three-pronged attack as well as far as when I talk about corporations and us like being ready to like uh, to for the opportunities that they are willing to provide. Right. But also like the other end of that spectrum. For me, I'm a big fan of entrepreneurship as well. Right. So, like trying to create my own opportunities. And yeah. um, when you talk about that, like here here comes tech again, like inserting itself in that space and you have like a really a generation of overnight millionaires Maybe. like from this industry <laughs> it's true. and it's just like hard to believe like you know what i'm saying you think about the amazons and different stuff like that and that's like within my lifespan like that, crazy, that, man? That's and, wild. and it's still like it's still unbelievable for me but um i think what's really cool about it when you think about the history of black people and this country like we were there was there was a balance there as far as like providing their own businesses mm. um, and the culture that was there that you could always fall back and lean on to. Right. But I think what that looks like in the new age, again, is like a balance where like we're not completely devoid of black businesses, right. but we also have like the corporations as well to where like, we almost like we have choice. You'll have choices now. and I. I right. I think you're you're definitely seeing an age where more entrepreneurs are popping up um, in that space. Um, but I, I think that's one thing that needs to rise also with the diversity. Black um, businesses, man, I think yeah. you nailed it, right? I think there's something to be said for for people who look like us to have a place to go to find work, to find mm -hmm. opportunity. Not to say that the companies aren't trying, you know, right. I mentioned Ashuri on trying to do more about diversity. But there's something to be said to have you know shared experience with someone yeah. where it's not only uh, you know conversational, it's like lived experience is really the right. idea, right? And right. so you know anything that I think I can do to support black business from a technology perspective or even just business perspective, I'm right. about it. And so you know I totally resonate with that idea of like how do you make change, uh, fundamental change. And I think some of that is institutionalizing black businesses in such a way that they can be a resource for other people. And so, yeah, man, 100%. Absolutely, man. I, uh, ooh, trying to, uh, I keep a, a tab of okay. like my favorite, <laughs> like favorite businesses yeah. as far as like when I find them and collect them. Um, but now, um, I think it's it's gotten to the point where <laughs> like I'm gonna run out of space on my yeah. <laughs> like with so many saved tabs. So uh, I think for the longest I was like, man, there should probably be a, a, a application dedicated to like, of course, like the black businesses in the area and travel right, around. It. And right. I've seen a lot, like personally, seen a lot of those pop up. Mm. Um, and it's it's really good to see that like the movement kind of build around it and yeah, then tech like. Uh, um, elevating it to the next level. It, in this tech sense. is uh, tech is a multiplier, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have some of the greatest investors of all time just saying that if you don't have something that's adjacent to technology, you're missing out because you yeah. won't be able to move fast enough. You mm -hmm. can't adapt fast enough. Yeah. And so some of the things that we talk about in a lot of professional software development places is CI/CD, yeah. continuous uh, integration, continuous deployment. But it's really about like continuous improvement, and <laughs> continuous delivery, right? right? And so how do we bring that to our community? But we're always trying to not only like deliver the next thing, but we're also trying to level up and improve that process. Right. And so like, how do we as like black technologists bring that idea to our community? And I think it's like creating community resources like the Black Codes. Yeah. I think even things we're trying to do with Pivot. I think the things that we're doing with NASJS. It's about how do we again institutionalize some of these ideas. Yeah. So that again, I think if we go back in time and be a resource to ourselves, then. I can only imagine where we'd be right now, you know what right. I'm saying? We'd be one of those Zuckerbergs or Bezos, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you gotta have that type of support. And so, yeah. yeah. I, I like that, I like that. I wanna move away a little bit and get a little more, um, I guess tech, well, a little more, um, 
individual focus okay. as far as like your method because like this is something that I talk about as far as like mm. um, getting in the groove of coding or oh, okay. like yeah as far as like the style of learning because I know it's, it's different for everybody because right, right, like right. understanding for myself that self-learning was the path that I took yeah. um, and now we are so many different ways as far as video as far as like reading um, material reading material yeah, yeah and so really like what are some of the things that work best for you and how do you approach i guess learning something new in tech right yeah no for me like i'll just be very clear <laughs> like in like high school and like college like grades were not like my thing like i could i could get by i could do my thing but we would have got exactly <laughs> 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 Not to, not to brag or anything, it was just that like the, the traditional style of learning, um, I, I had to find out on my own, like some things that yes. fit me in, and it took me a little bit longer than others. But Man, that's, yeah. a, that's exactly right. I think it was me realizing that I didn't have to go the route everyone else did, I can mm -hmm. kind of go my own way, and that's okay, so long as like I'm learning and I'm progressing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, someone will say, oh, I need to learn React. Okay, like I could probably watch the same video that guy did, but it yeah. might not click for me the first time. I probably need four or five different resources to explain it differently. Yeah. And I feel like we're probably the best time ever with technology where YouTube is everywhere. Videos right. are everywhere. There are people out here creating tutorials, creating resources for you to learn. And so for someone like me who probably learns in a non-traditional way, I need all those things to synthesize an idea. But I think uh, for me it's language too. Like I, hearing someone else say the same thing but slightly differently is a big part of it. And so that means reading. It means videos, maybe it means podcasts, when someone talks about something. And for me, that's how I like crystallize anything I learn. And so, I, get it however you can get it, I guess yeah, is the... <laughs> yeah, and that's really, I just throw it at the wall and see what sticks when it yeah, comes man. to looking at all the plant. Like, we'll go through blog, medium blogs, you like, already know. Medium, camp, camp. Camp. Yeah, like, man. All right, that didn't work, let me try it. Like, that didn't work, let me try it. I was like, okay, I'm... I think that was a little bit good. Um, and, and yo, you know, the most important thing is to actually try to apply it. Yeah. Like, just code it, just try it. Because yeah. code, it can break. That was something that I had to get past when I was in Nashville Software School, where I would be afraid to even run the code, because I'm like, I know it's going to break, because I know I didn't do something right. <laughs> but you realize, that's like free. It doesn't cost you anything. Right. It gives up a little bit of time to run it. And if it right. breaks, that's cool, run it again. Yeah. Tweak it, change it. That's really what software development is about. Man, so, I wish somebody had told me that like three years ago. Okay. Um, just kind of going through that process of breaking and, re and being comfortable with breaking code right. as well. Like, cause that took me so long. Like, what's gonna happen if I hit the execute? <laughs> <laughs> right. <And they're> like, <laughs> the possibilities, like, I, I don't think I'm ready for that much pressure. It's like, man, you gotta, like, you, you gotta, gotta get past right that, stuff. man. Yeah, and yeah. Then, like, even, like, the failure is the path to learn. Like you know, that's exactly that's right, man. Learn, man. Like if these million dollar, you know, billion dollar corporations can make room for the mistakes. Yeah, the developers. Like then you have that much better a product. There's a particular talk I'll have to share with you about. Like Jeff Bezos talks about it. He says what makes Amazon successful is he's created a space where he can make more mistakes than anyone else ever can. Yeah, and so I don't know if y'all remember like the Fire Phone. Like what happened to that? Like Amazon was trying to make a phone. <laughs> Then nothing happened with it, but yeah. they did it. And yeah. it flopped, but it's okay. Right. He's still right. the richest man in the world. And right. so you gotta create space for yourself to make mistakes. And like that goes for everything from code. I've learned that with like infrastructure now, with things like Terraform, where you can just spin up whole cloud resources and it doesn't work. Fight, destroy. <laughs> Hey man, and I think that's like, there's something inherently like true about the black experience in that. That's just like, I think we are the people that take those pieces of things that didn't work and make something beautiful out of it. And so like, I always gotta tie it back to some sort of like uh, philosophical thing. That's just kind of how I roll, but man, that's like, I think that's our story. And so I try to embrace that and try to make something out of that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's probably a good stop. Right yeah. All right, so the last thing, I, um, Really, what do you do as far as when you're not in tech or mm. when you're not coding? Yeah. Um, as far as what you do to relax and hobbies or anything that you like to do to unwind and get your mind outside of coding? Man, right now it's trying to learn piano. It was forced on me as a kid, but now I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use the same stuff we were talking about. I'm trying to learn. 
Honestly, man, it's been like the most therapeutic thing in the world, man. Like just to have some time to like focus on something new and learn some new stuff, I think that's the best. So like, even learning is like my best time. But. Oh, that's dope. What was your reason for jumping in? Like as a kid, was it just your parents was like, hey? Yes, so mom was just like, you know, you need a hobby, go learn how to play piano, you need to be an artist somehow. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I'm gonna play guitar. And so I don't wanna play piano, but yeah. Now yeah. I, I do it on my own terms and it feels good. And it's like, it actually has helped me type too. So like, I feel like a better coder in some oh, way. it's interesting that you say that because my sister, she, my, she ended up taking piano lessons I think around the start of high school, like ninth grade, I had to ask her, but it was for to improve, uh, I believe, literacy, like literacy wow. and just like improving her writing and stuff. And I didn't know, I was going to ask you about that as far as like, is there any correlation to that connection? I don't know for sure. I don't know. I know her grades improved, but she's like... <laughs> She's a smarter one in the family. You know, I can say one thing about like intellect. They say that intellect is your ability to navigate problem space. And so all that means is like, the more ways you can learn to think about a problem, yeah. typically the more intelligent you are. And that's really what an IQ test is about. And so I can imagine like learning any skill is gonna make you more skilled in general and more intelligent. So I think there's something that they're on to something, okay. man. Okay, <laughs> that's some validity there. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um, well, that is going to end our show for today. Before we log off, we would like a special thank you to Tacos with a Twist for allowing us to use their space. Um, Tacos with a Twist, uh, they're located in the Berry Hill area. Um, if you come in September, they have a dope shrimp taco. I think it's the sweet and sour, like sweet and sour aioli. Like I didn't had that thing like three times. So, <laughs> um, I'm sure one more time I'll, I'll uh, I'm gonna try and get the recipe up off of them. But yeah, we uh, we appreciate you guys stopping by for the show and stick to the code.